Welcome to the Crystal Empire. I was so honored you wanted to speak to me today. I do apologize, but we will need to keep our voices down a little bit. My daughter, Princess Flurryheart, she's asleep in the room next door, and we don't want to wake her up. <laughs> so, how is it that I can help you today? Love advice? <laughs> well, you've certainly come to the right pony. What kind of advice do you need? Ah, so you're crushing on some pony, are you? <laughs> that can be really exciting. Just the feeling of crushing on someone can make your day so much better. Can you tell me who this special pony is? M my sister-in-law? Princess Twilight? Oh, one of Princess Twilight's friends. <laughs> mm-hmm. I see. Well, you don't have to get into specifics if you don't want to. I'm pretty sure I know Twilight's friends well enough to give you some advice. You are in what I'd like to call the first stage of love. The crush stage. When you just don't know if that other pony will share your affection. And you're maybe a little bit scared that they might not. Am I right? <laughs> I know these things because I've been there myself. When I was crushing on Shining Armor, I was certain that he would never have given me the time of the day. Sure, I was just a newly made princess, but even princesses can get nervous. I would see him so gallant, so strong, so ready to help any pony in need. And I thought, I couldn't possibly be good enough for him. But I sure loved the feeling of crushing on him. Imagining what it might be like if we were going to be in love. Of course, my love story has a happy ending, as I'm sure you're aware. But even with all the best advice in the world, you just can't force some pony else to love you. So, I can give you advice, but I don't want you to feel bad if it doesn't work out. If my time as a princess has taught me anything... It's that every pony and creature can find love. So if this pony, Twilight's friend, doesn't share your affection, don't be too disheartened. You just have to get back up and try again until you find the one for you. But enough about all that. Let's talk about some ways to get the pony of your dreams to notice you. Have you ever heard of something called the languages of love? There are a total of five different languages of love. And what a language of love is, is the way that you prefer for someone to love you. Every pony is different. And knowing which language you speak and which language they speak is very important. The first one is called words of affirmation. Words of affirmation are valuable verbal cues. Ponies who speak the language of words of affirmation love acknowledgments and affections told to them, either by mouth or in message form, like scrolls sent through magic. They like hearing frequent I love you's, compliments, words of appreciation when they do something wonderful, verbal encouragement, these written and spoken shows of affection matter the most to these ponies. They make them feel understood and appreciated, and that translates to love. I would say that words of affirmation is something that Rainbow Dash would really enjoy to hear. She works so hard to be a Wonderbolt, and she loves hearing the cheers of the crowd. When some pony tells Rainbow Dash that she's done something wonderful or right, it fills her with such satisfaction and such joy. I bet if you were trying to get Rainbow's eye, if you complimented her, you might get her attention. Another pony who might enjoy words of affirmation is Rarity. She works hard too, making all of those new designs 
and she loves it when some pony tells her how beautiful those dresses make them feel. Oftentimes, Rarity is behind the scenes in her boutiques, and she doesn't get to experience the joy of a customer taking home a dress. So if you tell her how much you appreciate her, how wonderful her designs are, and just how much you encourage her to keep going, I'm sure she might respond pretty positively to your affection. The second language of love is quality time. And this one's pretty self-explanatory. Ponies want to spend time with their partners and they want your undivided attention. They love active listening and eye contact and don't really want any other distraction to keep them from their time with you. Ponies like my sister-in-law Twilight would probably respond very well to quality time. She is a princess, and I can tell you from experience that being a princess is hard work. So whenever she spends time with some pony that she cares about, she doesn't want to have to think about all those responsibilities. She wants to be able to relax and spend time with you. I have to admit, this is probably one of my love languages too. Getting to spend quality time with Shining Armor is so precious to me. And with Flurry Heart and an entire empire to run, we get less and less of that. I suppose that just means it makes it even more special when he can spend the time with me. While well, Flurry naps, of course. <laughs> the third language is Acts of Services. This is when a pony goes out of their way to make life easier for the pony of their affection. Like bringing them soup when they're sick, or making coffee in the morning is that little added pick-me-up. This is the language for ponies who say that actions speak louder than words. I bet this is a love language that would be very enjoyed by our dear Fluttershy. Fluttershy takes care of so many adorable little animals but she can't be everywhere at once. I'm sure if some pony were to offer to help her, she would be so grateful. There are lots of little mouths to feed after all, and lots of little cages to clean. Not something I would particularly enjoy doing if I were Fluttershy. Some ponies just don't respond well to acts of service. Take my sister-in-law, for example, Twilight usually has a very specific way of doing things, and when other ponies try to help her, well, sometimes it doesn't translate as positively as they were hoping. The same can be said for Applejack, who also works very hard on the apple farm, but has a really hard time accepting help. It's not because they don't appreciate your help, or that they don't appreciate your offer, but they really want to do things on their own and that's just not their language of love. And there's nothing at all wrong with that. The fourth language is gifts. Another pretty straightforward language of love. Ponies whose love language is gifts feel loved the most when they get visual symbols of love. An argument could be made in the case of rarity someone who loves gemstones and rare objects that she can use in her sewing. But I think the strongest case for gifts would be Pinkie Pie. Pinkie uses gift giving as her language of love, the way that she shows affection to others. She delivers her cupcakes, balloons, toys, and other crazy but wonderful presents to all of her best friends in Ponyville and beyond. Why, just the other day, I got a package from Pinkie Pie, and it exploded with glitter, making Flurry Hearts squee in delight and clap her hooves. Though Shining Armor was pretty close by, and he didn't really enjoy having to pick the confetti out of his mane. <laughs> the biggest misconception about gifts as a love language is that the gifts have to have some large monetary value. But that's not the point of the love language at all. Ponies who enjoy this love language enjoy the symbolic thought behind the item. If some pony were to give Maud a giant diamond, 
she probably wouldn't respond as well as if they were to give her a simple pebble, someone that she could name and take around with her as a pet. It's about knowing that ponies' wants, needs, and desires above all else. Something simple, but something with your heart. Don't get me wrong, getting chocolates and flowers is a wonderful gesture for a date. But Shining Armor knew I would appreciate something like a little blue ribbon much more than a box of chocolates. I wore that ribbon in my mane for weeks. He knew that it was my favorite color of blue, and I was so happy that he remembered that about me. The last language of love is physical touch. Ponies feel loved when they receive physical signs of affection, like a kiss on the cheek, holding their hoof, or a cuddle on the couch. Ponies who use this love language typically love to give hugs and receive them in return. If I were to make a case for one of Twilight's friends, I might choose Applejack for the physical touch love language. After working hard all day, bucking apples, taking care of farm animals, and upkeeping the farm, a hug or a simple peck on the cheek might brighten Applejack's day. Of course, this is just my professional opinion, not a fact. I'm sure a case could be made for all of the love languages for Twilight and her friends. Now that you've heard all five languages of love, what do you think? What do you think your love language is? Hmm, that's interesting, but still a very good one. It's important to remember, though, you don't have to feel limited to just one language. It's not an exclusive club. I promise. <laughs> if I were you, I would ask the pony of your affections, friends, to see what they think. How did they show them that they care? Not every pony's love language is going to match up, though. Take, for example, Pinkie Pie. She tried to give Rainbow Dash pies as a gift to show her affection for Rainbow. But Rainbow Dash didn't like the pies. Rather than hurt Pinkie Pie's feelings, she just gave them away or got rid of them before Pinkie could find out. She didn't want to hurt Pinkie's feelings. That doesn't make Rainbow Dash a bad pony. It just means that Pinkie used the wrong love language to show Rainbow that she cared. I bet if Pinkie were cheering in the crowds of her Wonderbolt show, Rainbow Dash would feel a lot better than having to hide pies that she's not fond of. Once you learn that pony's language of love, and you really begin to understand how to make them feel special, what's the next step? Taking a page out of Applejack's book, being honest, of course. It can be very frightening to tell some pony you care about that you truly care about them but they'll have already seen all of your efforts to make them feel appreciated and special. So now would be the time to tell them how you feel. If they return your affection, that's wonderful, and I'm so happy that you two can start to blossom in love. But don't forget to keep communicating to them in their love language. Just because you're together doesn't mean that they don't still need to feel loved and appreciated. If you'll indulge me, I have a few other tips that might help you in the case of you and your special pony that will help you maintain a loving and healthy relationship. Do you mind? <laughs> I'm just so excited to talk about love to any pony who ever asks. One thing I noticed when I first fell in love with Shining Armor is my desire to want to be around him all the time. This wasn't necessarily to do with my language of love for him, but my desire to continue to feel that happy, warm, butterfly feeling whenever he was near. However, it was very important for me to remember that he has a life outside of our relationship, and that doesn't mean he loves me any less, but he has friends and family and obligations that won't include me, and that's okay. 
not everything had to be about me. And the same could be said for me. At the time, I was living with Princess Celestia, and I had lots of princess duties I needed to take care of, and those duties couldn't always include shining armor. Giving your partner some space to do what they want to do is instrument to happiness. If two ponies truly do care about one another, they'll always make sure to make time for you and your love. It's also important to open up to their interests. Can I tell you a little secret? <laughs> Don't tell Shining Armor this, but he's actually a Grand Master Ogres and Oubliettes champion. I'd never played the game before I met him, but I could tell how much he loved playing, and I wanted to experience that joy with him. I wasn't very good at it, but I certainly tried. Although I don't typically play that game with him very much anymore, I'm very supportive of his time playing it. I immersed myself in the world of his game so that I could celebrate his victories with him and console him over his defeats. And that's really the only way that Ogres and Oubliettes affects my life anymore. I didn't have to like the game, but I had to support his liking the game. Does that make sense? The same can be said for shining armor when it comes to mud baths. I love going to the spa and getting a mud bath, but he absolutely cannot stand it. He says it makes his fur feel strangely, even after we're out of the mud and clean. But shining armor would never tell me that I couldn't have mud baths, nor tell me that he won't come with me to the spa. Usually, he will just sit and read his favorite magazine or book while I enjoy a soak. It's also important to remember that every couple is going to fight. That's just a natural and very normal part of a relationship. Two people taking individual lives and trying to form a new one together can be very difficult sometimes. There's always going to be little habits that get under your skin, and no matter what you do, they just won't break them. For example, Shining Armor is a hoof biter. It drives me crazy, but he just won't stop. It's caused an argument before, until we both compromised, and he said he would not bite his hooves while I was around. I don't have to like it, but at least we came to an understanding with one another so that we could still live together in harmony. The biggest piece of advice I can give for arguments is just to communicate. Oftentimes, ponies want to make the other pony feel good and feel happy. They don't like leaving things on a standstill of anger or sadness. Compromise is a huge part of love. And that compromise can only be met if you're willing to listen. It's also okay if you make mistakes. Love isn't a competition. And as long as your partner truly tries to keep the relationship going, they're not going to keep score. Now maybe we should talk about the dark underbelly of love. I know, it's hard to hear that love doesn't always last. Or it might not even work the way you want it to the first time. Love is complicated, just like friendships. And that's why we have to learn so many different kinds of lessons. And that's why we learn and adapt as we grow. Sometimes loving some pony completely just isn't enough. You can't force some pony to have feelings for you. And that's not your fault. You do not become less of a pony if some pony else spurns your affection. I know it can be difficult to be rejected, and it can be very frightening to pursue love when rejection is hanging in the air, but I'm here to tell you that love is worth fighting for. It's worth countless heartaches, heartbreaks, to find it at last. Nothing in life is a guarantee. Sometimes you lose love in a way that no pony could have prevented. I actually don't know who my real parents were 
I was found as an infant by two elderly earth ponies, and they raised me until Princess Celestia adopted me as her unofficial niece. My earth pony parents unfortunately have since passed away, and that's a hole in my heart that will never be filled again. But the wonderful thing about love is, the love that they had for me and the love that I have for them is still there in my heart, and no pony can ever take that away. <laughs> I suppose I got off on a little bit of a tangent there. I'm sorry. I'm just so excited to talk about love and all of its many, many facets. I hope I've given you some great advice to consider, and I hope, too, that Twilight's friend, whoever they may be, will soon see the efforts you are making to show them that you care. Just know that whenever you need another piece of advice, to come to the Crystal Empire and to see me again, I will always be willing to talk about love with you. For now, I should probably go and wake Flurry Heart up from her nap. She's probably going to be very hungry. So for now, I will have to bid you farewell. I hope that all goes well for you and that I will see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>